The schedule has come out for the NFL. The 2023 schedule has been dropped. A lot of crazy matchups. The Jets are, you know, they they have a pretty rough schedule. The Giants have one of the most brutal schedules in the entire NFL. Uh, but we're both Patriots fans. We love having Patriots discussions on this show. And it's, it's, it's a big year for the Patriots. Is Mac Jones the guy... You know, did they screw up on the 15th pick two years ago on drafting Mac Jones? I think I think now we finally figure it out. So let's get right into that topic. Uh, so the Patriots over under, it came out that the Patriots have the lowest over under in 22 years. Seven and a half wins they're projected over under. And uh, let's, let's bring up the schedule, why don't we? Here it is. This is the official schedule. You start week one at home against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's tough. What a way to start the season. Then you go uh, versus Miami. Still at home. Then you're at Jets and at Cowboys. You go back home for New Orleans. At Jimmy G uh, and Devontae Adams with the Raiders. Then you're back home for the Bills at Dolphins. Week 8, that's about what? Is that end of October, if I'm not mistaken? So it's you know it's it's a little bit better weather than early September. Uh, but you're going to be at home early September, so that's good for you against the Dolphins. Then you go to Washington. That should be a win there. Then you're versing the Colts. Who's the Colts quarterback? Are they going to start Anthony Richardson? Or are they going to go with uh, Gar- uh, uh, Minshew? Who knows? You have a Week 11 bye. That's a pretty decent bye to have. Then you're going at Giants versus the Chargers. At Steelers versus Chiefs. I think that is a uh, primetime game. At Broncos, at Bills, and you finish it at home. Uh, you're at home against Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. A pretty brutal schedule. So, I don't know how many wins do you expect the Patriots to have uh, in 2023? Okay, well, let's go down through the schedule. And I'll do it for you, okay? Let's go. Week one against the Eagles. I have a loss. Shocking. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> I mean, that's a Super Bowl team. And, uh, I just think that that's going to be tough for the Patriots. I think it'll be competitive. Okay. Most of the games against the Patriots are competitive. They, they're going to have a good defense for sure. We don't know about the offense. We'll have to see. In week two against Miami, I have a win. I think the Patriots win at home against uh, Miami. That makes them uh, one and one. And uh, week three against the Jets, at the Jets, I'm afraid this is the year the Jets are going to beat them. Okay, took them seven think, years, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. they've lost four, fourteen games, 14 to, the Patri- games, games yeah. to the Patriots. Games to the Patriots. I think the Jets are going to win this game. So now they're one and two at the Cowboys. I think they lose that one too. Unfortunately, now they're one and three against the Saints at home. They're going to win that one, two and three against the Raiders. I think they'll win that game after last year. I think they'll be fired up to win that game. That gets them back to uh, three and three. And then against Buffalo, they're going to lose that game. Uh, Buffalo's got their number and has it for the last several years now. I just don't think they're going to win that one. Now they're three and four, and I think they lose to Miami at Miami. They never win there, right? So now they're, what, three and five? Uh, Then against the Commanders at home, they win that one. The four and five against the Colts, they're going to win that one. They're five and five against the Giants. I think they'll win that one. Now they're uh, six and five. Six and five. And against the Chargers, I think that's at home. They're going to win that one. Now they're uh, six and five. I uh, know six and four uh, against uh, the Steelers. I think they win that one. Seven wins. Uh, now against the Chiefs, they're going to lose that one. Uh, against the Broncos, I think they win that one. Now they're eight. they've got eight wins. Uh, they lose to the Buffalo, and then at home against the Jets, they're going to win that one. Nine wins. Nine. Nine and eight. And eight. Nine and eight. That's what I've got them at. Now, what's funny is is I broke this down to three. Worst case scenario, the probable win-loss total, and then the best case scenario. I have it. I, I, I agreed with you, uh, except for the Raiders in your first nine picks. I do think Devontae Adams, I mean, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, I think they got a new tight end as well. Uh, in the preseason, you couldn't beat Devontae Adams. In the regular season, you had that weird uh, Jacoby Myers blunder. Uh, Mac Jones did not play good in that game at all. You still got Chandler Jones. You still got Max Crosby. Um, I, I, I think the Patriots lose there. Uh, I picked them also losing to the Chargers. Even though Justin Herbert had a bit of a problem with Bill Belichick in recent years, I do think this is the year where Justin Herbert gets the upper hand against uh, the Patriots. They're playing him at the Patriots. I also have the Broncos with new head coach Sean Payton, Hall of Fame head coach Sean Payton, uh, beating the Patriots as well. Besides, the Broncos had the number one defense last year against Mac Jones, who just came off a very, very bad year. Um, and I also I agree with you. The Jets, uh, the Patriots do win last week at at uh, versing the Jets at home. 
So the worst case scenario, you go five and twelve. The reason why you go five and twelve is you lose both Miami games uh, and you lose both Jets games as well. So that that would be your worst case scenario, I think, because I think every other win loss is is fine. I still think the Chargers are going to beat you, uh, but that's the worst case scenario. You go five and twelve. The pro, I'm going to go, and then the best case scenario is ten and seven. You win both Jet games. You win both uh, both Bills games. Um, and I believe both Bills games, both Bills games, and you also beat the Chargers. I would give that ten and seven. That would be a ten. I don't seven. see him beating the Bills twice. I, I'm saying that's best case scenario. Let's yeah. somehow if they do it, the probable win losses seven and ten, seven and ten. So I would bet the under for this. It would be Bill Belichick's worst season since he went five and eleven his first year with New England. Because I think the Patriots are just based on talent alone cannot go up against a Tyree Kill and a Jalen Waddle and beat them like uh, consecutively. I, I don't see it. You're not going to go up against the Stephon Diggs. Now, maybe Christian Gonzalez will be a good upgrade over what you had. Because what I've said all year last year with the Patriots, they have small, thin cornerbacks. Just look at the Bengals game. I always hark back to the Bengals game. It's a perfect example. T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd and Jamar Chase just absolutely dominated physically. Marcus Jones got mossed. Jonathan Jones got destroyed. Like, that's a perfect game on why the Patriots need bigger cornerbacks. And Christian Gonzalez gives you that twitchiness. The only problem is the thing that Belichick needs to coach out of Christian Gonzalez is he's too handsy. He may, he may get a lot of penalties called. I know Belichick ain't going to like that. So he needs to coach that out of him. So I think, realistically, Eagles loss. Dolphins uh, versus Dolphins win at Jets loss at Cowboys loss versus Saints. I'll give you the W as well. I don't think they're... I mean, I, I like Derek Carr. I think he's you know underappreciated in the league, but I do think that is a L for Derek Carr. Uh, at Raiders, that's a loss. Versus Bills, that's a loss. At Dolphins, loss. Versus Washington, that's a W. Colts, W. Giants. I'll, I'll give the Giants the loss here. I say Giants take the big L uh, and give the Patriots that W. Chargers, the Patriots lose that. Steelers, Patriots win. Chiefs, uh, Patriots lose. They're going to get shellacked. In prime time against the Chiefs, let's be honest here. Uh, at Broncos, that's a loss. At Bills, that's a loss. You can conclude the rest of the year. Week 18, versing the Jets. I say that's a W. You take home a 7-10 and record. I think Belichick moves off Mac Jones, which is a mistake because Belichick doesn't know how to form a uh, proper offense outside of Tom Brady, which should be definitely an interesting conversation. And, and, and I think the big thing is, if they do go down that, that pathway, right? What, what did you have for your first nine games there? How, how many wins did you have in the first I'll nine say, games? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got one, two, three, four wins. Four wins. Four so in, in, the, in the first nine games, if It'll be four and five. If if the if Mac Jones, because I have in the first nine games, I have three wins. So we have similar wins. If, I have the Raiders. You don't. I yeah right. If if Mac Jones goes, let's say he goes four and five or three and six. Can you see Belichick putting in Bailey Zappi for Week Ten versing the Colts? Uh, maybe, but I think it depends on uh, how Jones plays. I mean, if he plays terrible and he's uh, got a lot of interceptions and he loses a few games because of the interceptions and they're three and six, then yeah, I think there's a chance of that. I'm gonna predict the, the games Mac Jones is gonna play bad in, and we can mark the tape here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna get the exact time here. Four, let's see here, 450, 445, exactly on the dot of this video. He's going to play badly against the Eagles. He's going to play badly against the Cowboys. The Raiders, he's going to have another bad game. Versing the Bills, I think he'll have an okay game. He might have a lot of interceptions, but I think it'll be like week 18 last year. Three touchdowns, three picks. He had his best QBR game of the entire season at that. At Dolphins, he'll have a bad game. He'll have three bad, bad, bad games uh, in the first nine weeks. So I think I think it's gonna be difficult. The Patriots start off pretty brutally. Eagles, Eagles, Dolphins, Jets, Cowboys. That's a brutal way to start off the season. Eagles just came back from the Super Bowl. Dolphins, you have a ter you have a horrible time trying to beat the Dolphins, especially early in the season. Jets with Aaron Rodgers and the rest of that talent, the rest of that core, you're gonna have a difficult time beating Aaron Rodgers. The Cowboys defensively, it's too much for Mac Jones and the Patriots offensive line that I don't think entirely got fixed. So it, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how the Patriots sort of, you know, mesh around whatever is going on there because I think it's an absolute mess. Um, but we'll see. It, I, I'm going to call it again. If reports come out again in the offseason, the offense is lackluster, uh, would-be sacks, uh, stopped runs at the line, I'm going to come on here and say for the second straight year, the Patriots are doomed because I said it last year. 
The, the, all the reports came out. The offense was slow. Interceptions here, interceptions there. Fumbles would be sacks because you can't sack a quarterback in training camp. I'm just saying, if it starts off the same way, I think you need to accept that the Patriots are, are headed for a, they're they're on a runaway train. Well, I think they're in the toughest division in the uh, in football. I don't know if this is t- it, it's it, I think it's all. Who's, who's got a better division uh, than the than the East? The uh, AFC East. I would give the AFC West the nod because they got they, they they got Justin Herbert. They have Mahomes. They have Russell Wilson now with the Hall of Fame coach Sean Payton. I don't love the the Chargers head coach. I think Brandon Staley should have been gone last year after he choked. In the he's end. a weak coach. It, it, it's bad. And then you also have the Raiders, who we'll see how good Josh McDaniels could be. Uh, maybe you know who knows with Jimmy G. You know they should. Hypothetically, on paper, should blend. They worked under the same offense for a number of years while Jimmy G was a backup for the Patriots. So we'll see exactly how they mesh together and how that offense forms. But if, I guarantee you, if the Raiders go off to another bad year, we'll now understand that blaming Derek Carr for the Raiders' struggles wasn't entirely his fault. Now, Derek Carr did not have a great year, but Josh McDaniels isn't exactly you know a great head coach. Just look at the numbers. So we'll see. I do think the AFC West gets the knock because Mahomes is, is like, if you compare it to the rest of the quarterbacks, unbelievably talented. Like yeah. there's there's number it, it's do Mahomes, you think Burrow, if they, and then a gap. do you think if the Patriots go seven and ten Belichick gets fired? I don't think Belichick. Uh, Robert Kraft has voiced his displeasure since Brady left, and he says we need to make the playoffs. Well, they made the playoffs once and got they dominated. got hammered. They got hammered, did but they did give, make the they, playoffs. So they did make it with a rookie quarterback. Yeah, but then so. you, yeah, no, right, right. So on paper, if, if you just said the Patriots made the playoffs with a rookie quarterback, great. What happened in that game? They didn't force a punt. It's true, but they did make the playoffs, right. okay? But, but it, now they it missed the playoffs. It. They missed the playoffs last year. Right. So let's say they miss them again two years in a row. Three out of four years, they would have missed the playoffs without Brady. Yeah. I think a lot of, a lot of questions are going to get answered, I think. You think he could get, you think uh, Kraft would fire him? I think Belichick, I think Belichick's legacy takes a ding. I do because if you're telling me, that, oh, but you're not answering my question. No, I, no, I will. I'm just saying. I I think Kraft is unbelievably frustrated, but I think Robert Kraft respects Belichick enough to understand why he's still in the league. He's going for Don Shula's record. Now that may take him four years to do, based on what he. How many wins does he need now to get? I there? think he's thirty something wins away. Is he still thirty away? Yeah, he's he's like what twenty seven, thirty wins away. Yeah. I mean, what Don Shula had an unbelievable record. Now I think Belichick he's not going to win 10 games a year. I think that that's a that's a known fact, set in stone known fact. Um so I think it could take 4 or 5 years to for, to get this record depending on, you know, what Belichick does. Now the draft picks weren't all that great. We'll see how Kayshawn I thought Boutte, they had a pretty good draft. Kayshawn Boutte, who was supposed to I be I mean, a, he, I thought he was a steal. It, it, he hey, was ranked the number 1 receiver in a lot of polls. He he was ranked the very very he was ra- he was ranked the first round receiver and could have could have been the first receiver off the and board. He fell to the He had a bad combine and and had something off the field that just absolutely crushed his his draft stock. He wound up in round. what round? 6. 6 round. That could be the steal of the draft. If he could perform well, yeah, if, if he could play like he was listed uh, weeks ago, months ago as one of the top receivers, then yeah, that would be a steal. But I also wonder why did Christian Gonzalez drop all the way to seventeen? He was projected a top ten pick. He was he was arguably the best cornerback in the draft. I thought he was, and yeah. he dropped. I had him going to the Lions at number six. I think it. I think it had more to do with the what the other teams' needs were uh, before the Patriots picked. Could have been. Yeah. Could have been. So uh, he was a great. He was a great pickup. I think he'll be uh, a great player for them. I think that Belichick's view is. He drafts what he thinks are very good athletic and smart players. On defense. They don't uh, necessarily uh, have the limelight of some of the players. They don't, he, And he thrives on that. If, you're, if you come and you play well, you'll, you'll be playing. You know? if, you, if you work hard and you show that you can do it and you learn our system, you'll be in there playing. It doesn't matter who you are, right? Whether you're yeah. the first-round pick or the sixth-round pick. So, and he also thinks that he can teach these players, right? That he they, he can educate them to be really good. And I would say that in that category, he hasn't done so well like last year. Those players, they made so many mistakes. My God, they made some stupid mistakes. They lost at least three games with the players making stupid mistakes. So you've got to do a little bit better in that area. Right. If he can, then maybe the Patriots are a Cinderella team this year. They might... Uh, it might surprise. I'm not going to immediately just brush it off and say the Patriots are absolutely screwed. They're done. Because they do. I'm, I, hey, 
as much as I bash on Bill Belichick, because I think uh, you may not outwards, outwardly agree with me, but the offense, uh, Bill Belichick does not know how to form an offense properly. You could say, oh, Gronk, oh, Brady, all this. Uh, yeah, but outside of the greatest quarterback and the greatest tight end in history. By the way, Brady showed that it was mostly him by going to Tampa and dominating in Tampa. But offensively, outside of Brady, we saw before Brady he wasn't that good. Now after Brady, it's been absolutely abysmal. I will still give him the respect. But defensively, he's the greatest defensive head coach of all time. That, that I think that's set in stone. You can't touch that. There's no other defensive head coach that can take like a Div 2 guy in, in, in Kyle Duggar and make him into one, one of those, like, uh, the top 10, top 15 safeties in the league. You can't do that without a, without a tremendous defensive head coach. Now we'll see how Christian Gonzalez does. J.C. Jackson was unbelievable with the Patriots. Why did they not pay him the money? I still don't know. He had, what, 16 interceptions in two years? Give me a break. You don't give him the money? That, that, it was a system. That blew my mind. It was a system. Right, I understand that. He thought he could plug in another guy in the system that would do as well. And that was Jonathan Jones, who was not a plug-and-play type of a guy. Yeah, we'll see Christian how Gonzalez, Gonzalez, may, Gonzalez be that guy. may be that guy. He may be that guy, yeah. and, and we'll see. And look at uh, what J.C. Jackson did after he left. He would he got hurt, right? wasn't, admittedly, you know, but no, he was lousy. When he played, he wasn't he, that good. He was not good. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting, but I, I just think offense, like a lot of these picks were, were defensive players. You have an offensive line problem as well. Now, it could have been coaching because usually when your your offensive line has a lot of penalties. They have a new, they have a new uh, line coach. I believe it's the Oregon offensive line coach. who, I, If I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to recall. I think Belichick drafted that coach, I be, if I'm not mistaken. Belichick drafted that guy, and I think he played for the Patriots. It was on the Patriots for a while. Then he decided to go coach for Oregon after his playing career was done. Um, Belichick likes to do that. He has Gerard Mayo on the staff for, for a very long time. He has Troy Brown on the wide receiver coach staff. Yeah. So he likes he likes to bring back players. Yeah, he likes yeah, to bring back coaches. Yeah, he likes to bring back people he knows and people he's worked with. And Bill O'Brien fits that category. Bill O'Brien should be, and a, he should a great do a pick. much better job than uh, what they had Matt last Patricia. year. Yeah, I believe it's like senior yeah. defensive advisor, or something for the Eagles now. So yeah. we'll, we'll see how good the Eagles' defense is with Matt. Pat- yeah, you know, no, I'll give it to the Eagles. They put him in the proper role that Patricia could do. They, yeah. they didn't put him as like a QB coach or whatever. Uh, it looks like Joe Judge is back, you know, talking to special teams now. So now everyone's filling into proper roles. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but it, it's it's going to be interesting to see uh, what the Patriots do moving forward. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.